Hey guys, for this video we're going to be looking at the five most necessary formulas you need to know for Excel, all right? These are formulas that you cannot do without if you're trying to get a job or if you actually already have a job, then you can't just go ahead and try and live without VLOOKUPs or AutoSums or formulas like that, all right? So these five formulas, they're going to do a lot of head listing for you. Make sure that you understand them and that you know when to use them, all right guys? So. Let's get started. I'm just going to cover uh, the formulas, well, what I can in 25 minutes. Don't think that you're going to be an expert after this, but there, this is going to be a really, really, really good introduction for you to get started with these formulas. Practice makes perfect, all right, guys? It's not just about watching one video, it's about applying them dozens of times in your job. All right, guys, let's get started. The first one that we're going to, we're going to be covering is the AutoSum. The AutoSum is my personal favorite because it's so efficient, all right? It's the best way to do additions in Excel and additions are pretty much the most common formula you're going to be working with in Excel. Now, what we have here is this little square where we have a bunch of salespeople and a bunch of regions. We want to figure out the total amounts per salesperson. So what Joseph sold, Rudolf sold, Morris sold, so on and the total sales amount per region, all right, guys? So we're going to be adding up everything. Now, I know you already know how to do additions in Excel. It's pr pretty common knowledge. It's one of the first things that you learn, but AutoSum is going to change that for you, all right? Now, there's two ways to make sums in Excel. The first one is how my beginner students in the classroom do it, which is this way. Now, this is the most inefficient way. Don't ever do that again if that's you, all right? Now, most people actually type in equals sum and then they go over and select everything that they want to add and there we go we get uh we get our results now this is good enough but there's an even better way which is the auto sum all right you'll find it here in this little button right here but notice that when i get the dialog box i get my little um keyboard shortcut so that keyboard shortcut is going to be the actual key to making everything work. I'm going to just place my cursor right here in F19 and I'm going to press my shortcut, shortcut which is Alt equals. And notice how as soon as I pressed it, I got my AutoSum already typed, typed in and it includes the region to be added up, all right? So with that done, I already have my addition. Now you're probably thinking, well, that just saves you like a second or two from what we did before with just typing in the equal sum and selecting with the mouse. All right, yeah, but that's not, that's not the point. Here's the true power of the AutoSum. Notice how I'm going to select everything right here, including the regions where I want my total sums to be typed in. All right, guys? So I have, uh, I have selected everything, the data and the regions where I want the total sums to be typed in, and then I'm going to press on my keyboard, Alt equals, all right? And notice how I got everything in the first go, all right? Every single addition I wanted, including the main total, was added up with the AutoSum, all right, guys? Now, this is really, really, really important for you to know because this actually saves you up a bunch of time and um, it, it's also really impressive when you're adding, when you're doing additions using just your keyboard, all right? Now, just one final note. The AutoSum is going to try and fi figure out what it is that you want to sum. But if you don't give it any obvious candidates for for addition, say for example, I go over here and I press Alt Shift 0, uh, Alt equals, uh, notice how I get my sum, notice how I get my sum right here, and uh, it's empty. So I do have to drag my mouse and select, say for example, I want to add up everything that Joseph sold. There we go, all right? So it's going to try and be smart, but it's not that smart. All right, guys, so that's it for the basics. I know this is something that most of you didn't know, no matter what your Excel level. Now, the following one, the if function. Um, I really love this one, uh, but my students not so much because it involves thinking a little bit, all right? So the if function is going to be a way to make Excel make choices, all right? Very simple choices. Excel is not going to be deciding stuff in your life for you, but at least it's going to be telling you whether we can give a discount or not. Now, this is an exercise that was adapted from the online course. In the online course, we do like two hours of, of if functions, but right now I'm going to cover it really fast. All right, guys? So we have a bunch of uh, objects right here and uh, we have how many how many objects they were sold, all right? So this is, this is actually a chair. I know it says silla, but that's in Spanish. So we sold six chairs at $500 a chair. Now, they're really fancy chairs. So. 
I am going to multiply 6 times 500 and that's going to tell me that we have, um, for this line, we sold $3,000 in shares, all right, just for this line. Now, this store has a discount policy that if we spend more than $2,500 in any single purchase, it's going to give us 15% in discount, all right, a 15% discount. So this is where my students always mess up because calculating it by hand is really simple. We just have to figure out, all right, this person over here that bought six chairs at $500, yeah, they get a discount because it's over the $2,500 limit. But these people, they bought three bureaus for $250, yeah, uh, they don't get a discount, all right? That's below the threshold. So that's really simple if we try to do it by hand. Fresh hold is going to be $2,500. And uh, this count is going to be 15%. All right, guys? 15%, I said. All right. Now, the problem is that you, if you try to do it by hand, well, you have 75 pieces of data right here. And uh, you're probably going to be dealing with much bigger tables with much, much, much uh, larger amounts of data. So doing it by hand is go probably going to end up taking a ton of time. All right? So, guys. What we need to include here is an if function that is going to check if the total price is over or below the threshold, all right? So check it out, how is it going to work? I type in my equals and then I start typing in if, all right? If and open parenthesis, all right? So now I have if and open parenthesis. You'll notice it's offering me this little helper, but I'm going to ignore it. I'm going to go straight up here to where it says fx and we have function arguments here, all right? This is my little helper. This is going to be where I'm going to type in everything. So, um, in plain English, if sales are above $2,500, then we offer a 15% discount. And if not, we offer $0 in, in discount, all right, guys? Now, translate it to here. This is where I'm going to do my logical test, and this is where I'm going to say if it is actually true and if it is actually false. Let's see the example so you can understand it better. The logical test, the only thing that we're checking out right here is whether the total price is going to be larger than, is going to be larger than, um, larger than $2,500, all right? So we're taking a, we're checking if $3,000 is larger than $2,500. And I'm going to do an absolute reference here to make sure that uh, it's always $2,500. If you don't know anything about absolute references or relative references, I have a video on that, but you can just type in $2,500, all right? It's the same thing. So we're checking if those $3,000 are larger than $2,500. Now, if they are actually larger, we have to offer a 15% discount. However, the column is asking us for the discount in dollar amounts. So it's 15%. Multiply times the total price. So I grab the total price and I multiply it times 15%. All right, guys? And that gives us that we're going to be offering a $450 discount in this instance. All right? In this instance in particular. However, if it were the case that the total price is not larger than $2,500, then the discount amount in dollars is going to be a big fat zero. All right? Zero dollars that we're going to be offering you in discount. So, I'm going to press OK here, and that's going to give me my discount in dollar amounts. All right. Now, guys, things that I struggle with with my students, um, making sure that they understand that the logical test is just a, a test, all right? It's an equals or greater than or lesser than. There's no consequence here, all right? We're just checking if the total price is greater than 2,500, that's it. No consequence whether if it is or if it isn't. That's why we have this two, um, these two lines over here. Secondly, and this is more specific to this uh, example, this is the fact that I'm asking for the discount amount in dollars. So if there is going to be a discount, they need to know how to multiply the 15% times uh, the total price, all right? You have no idea how much trouble I have getting them to understand uh, this little percentage multiplication. So guys, if you don't understand percentages, make sure you actually understand that before any Excel formula. That's even more basic, all right? And, well, that's it. One last word right here is when you're working with the function uh, helper, this all is going to light up with actual results if you're doing everything right. If I were to type in something nonsensical, say for example, uh, whatever, like this over here, 
notice how it's not going to give us anything. That's a show that's Excel passively, aggressively telling you, you messed up, all right? You screwed up somewhere. So make sure that this shows a, a result, either zero or a discount or something, but if it shows up nothing, it's wrong. Something's wrong over there, all right, guys? Now, let's just drag our result all the way down and we already have everything right here. All right, guys, with that done, let's go over here to VLOOKUP. Now, VLOOKUP is the king of Excel formulas, mostly because it is so prestigious, not because it is so useful. It is useful, don't get me wrong. But most people, most people are going to, are going to test you, are going to judge your Excel skills based on where you can actually use VLOOKUP like a pro or whether you have no inkling of how it works. Because either you understand it or you don't. There's like no in between here, all right? So what does VLOOKUP do exactly? I always tell my students in the classroom that VLOOKUP is the computer equivalent or the Excel equivalent of going and searching for something in a phone book. So for those of you guys that actually remember phone books, and uh, I mean, they're not that old, all right? If you're watching this, I am sure you remember this. Um, we had, uh, say for example, I gave you the name of some person and I asked you to go search it up in a phone book, all right? So you'd grab the name, try and match it in the phone book, and then come back with a phone number, all right, guys? VLOOKUP does that exact same procedure in Excel, all right, via Excel. So say, for example, I'm giving you a part number right here, K22612, which is this one, am I asking for a price and a seller, all right? So if you go by hand, you're going to tell me that the price is $165 right here, and the seller is going to be Pedro, all right? So now we're going to be doing it with VLOOKUP. I'm going to start tapping in equals VLOOKUP, all right? Now, a lot of people ask me, what does the V stand for? It means vertical, all right? And that means that the table has to be organized in the following manner. Titles out and to a right, and the data is vertically arranged downwards, all right? So VLOOKUP with the lookup value being the part number. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just open parentheses and go over here to my little FX, which is going to open my function helper. All right, guys? Now, let's get started. We have four arguments here. The lookup value, the lookup value is going to be whatever it is that I'm starting with, all right? Whatever it is that I'm starting with when it comes to the data. So I'm starting with the part number. That is what I'm going to select right here. Guys, the main confusion I get with lookup value in my classroom is the fact that a lot of people think it is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the price right now, and a lot of people just go search the price by hand and then type it in for you. 165. Guys, don't do that. That defeats the entire purpose of the VLOOKUP, all right? If you had to go search it up by hand and then type in here, this, this would be the most useless formula ever. No, it's what you started with. And you started with the part number. We're going to select that right here. All right, now, the table array. This is pretty simple and self-explanatory. It's where I'm searching for. So it's going to be this entire table. Whether you select the titles or no, that's up to you. I always select the titles because yes. All right, guys? Now, with the title selected, uh, what we're going to be looking for right now is to make sure that I have the entire table in absolute reference, all right? So as soon as I stop selecting the table, I select the table, I'm going to press F4 on my keyboard and make sure that all of these, uh, all these signs light up, all of these uh, dollar signs light up to make sure this is an absolute reference. Now, guys, if you don't know anything about absolute references, this means that the table is always going to be here, all right? I'm telling you the table is always going to be from I13 to L27 and at no point is it going to move. Now, if you don't understand that, just take it on faith, all right? It's going to save you a lot of headaches when you're, do when you're doing VLOOKUP. Now, uh, call index num. This is the actual part where we tell it what it is that we're looking for. We're looking for the price, guys. So the price is going to be this one, column J, but it's not asking us which column letter. It's asking me which column number, all right? So I'm not going to tell it's column J. I'm going to start counting from the first column of the table that I just selected in the last item, and I'm going to start from here. One, two, three, four. In this instance, I want the price. It's one, two. That's where the price is at, okay? So number two. And finally, the range lookup is going to be asking me whether I want an exact lookup or an approximate lookup, all right? I want an exact lookup. And so I'm going to type in zero. Zero means an exact lookup. It's going to show up as false, but you're going to find here that false is going to be exact match. Now, approximate match, 
Um, that's something else entirely, all right? That's beyond the scope of this video. We covered it in the online course. I have another video, I think, where I ex explain approximate march. And uh, it's it's something else entirely. It's not what you think it is. It, it's, it's its own animal in its own right, okay? Notice how I get a 165 here, which is precisely what I was looking for. And that means I'm right. I'm going to press OK, and that's it. Now, guys, if you understood this, then this would be a really good time for you to press pause in the video and try and get the seller for me all right try and get the seller now if you're still watching this i assume you already practiced with the seller but let's uh let's do it on our own vlookup open parenthesis open my little function helper here and the lookup value is a part number the table array is this one the call index num is uh, number three, that's where we find the seller, and the range lookup is zero, always zero. All right, guys? Now, here's a little rule of thumb that it's really useful, I always tell it to my students. If you have anything that remotely looks like text in your lookup value, then you're always going to be doing an exact match, a zero in range lookup, all right? Don't even go wondering if you need an approximate or, or, or exact match. If you have text, in your lookup value, it's zero, always, all right? So just press OK here, and there it is, there we go. Uh, the amount of instances, I, I've been working, I've been teaching Excel for five years, and there was only once that I saw an exception to that, and it was like a really weird scenario. So guys, just make sure that you understand the lookup, and you understand the approximate match, the exact matches. All right, guys, now let's go into the next formula. This one is one I'm really... I struggle a lot with this one because I don't really see the need. Uh, pivot tables do most of what some ifs do, but let me explain to you what some ifs do in the first place. Some ifs are going to add up everything that we tell it to add up, but it's going to include some conditions, all right? So I can tell the sum if to add up every single invoice that was, um, that was made from the office in Monterey, all right? So it's going to add up this invoice and this invoice and this two invoices all right that's what some if is going to do all right so i can also tell it add up every single invoice that was uh, created in the month of november so it's going to be this two invoices right here all right guys so that's what some if does now if you're familiar with pivot tables then you're going to know that you can get the exact same result. Some if still has its place, but it's getting less and less and less important. So right, pivot tables can actually do that. And in my opinion, they're less error prone. But again, that's that's just about style. All right, guys, so let me talk a little bit about some if, uh, how's it going to work? The exercise right here is asking us to figure out all the invoices that we haven't added up. Uh, I'm sorry, all the invoices that are overdue. All right, guys, all the invoices that are overdue. So we have this little column here on H that is telling us when the payment due date was and what today was, all right? So say, for example, we have um, AG112. It was due on the 21st of November, and it's already the 12th of December. So that invoice should have been paid 21 days ago. So guys, I am going to establish my criteria here, at least in English, and I'm going to tell you every invoice that has a negative number here in the difference column, then it's overdue. All right, guys? So let's get to it. The total amount that I'm going to be using, I'm sorry, the total amount that I'm going to be calculating here is all overdue invoices. So I'm going to start typing in sum if, all right? And I'm going to open my parenthesis. And let's go over to the function helper. Notice how I get range, criteria, and sum range, all right? So I'm going to be discriminating my invoices. I'm going to be telling Excel, just pick this invoices to add based on some, something, all right? In this instance, based on the difference. Now, when it's, as, when it's asking us for range, it's actually asking us where is it going to be discriminating, all right? Not where is it going to be adding up, all right? The range where the data that it's going to be adding up is totally different and it's being asked for in this third argument. Now, this is the part where I struggle a lot with my students because they always uh, mixed up range and some range, all right? So make sure that you write that down, tattoo it into your hand, whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that you understand that range is where am I going to be discriminating, all right? Some range is where am I going to be adding up, all right? 
So the range in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and select the entire J column. All right. I could just go over and select this one right here, or I could select the entire J column. Why am I so confident in selecting the entire J column? Because if new information comes in, it's going to be included. It's going to be included in my addition. All right. So range is where am I going to be evaluating if something gets added up or not. Now, the criteria. This is the important part. How am I going to be doing that? Well, what is going to be added up? Everything that's less than zero. How am I going to type it in? Well, I'm going to type it in using the uh, quote symbol right here. Is less than zero. All right. The criteria is going to be less than zero. And the sum range, well, it's going to be everything in my amount column. I'm going to select my entire column G. I could just have gone ahead and selected this one, but I'm going to select my entire column G, all right? Why? Because I already selected my entire, my entire column J. I have no, no risk of uh, adding up the total or this little total or of self-referencing this function over here because the differences are not, I mean, there's nothing in difference there. So it's not going to fall within my criteria of approved stuff that I'm going to be adding up. All right. So that is going to tell me, press OK, that we have $16,000 in invoices that were, um, that, well, $16,000 in invoices that are overdue. Now, guys, one thing that I want you to note is that in order to avoid students from copying, because they usually just copy the result, um, I have it in, I have certain stuff here in, in random, uh, randomized. So whenever I change anything in my formula, it's going to look a little bit different. All right. And it's going to look different in your own file, but the formula is fine. It works. I mean, it works for pretty much any scenario that you care to, to, give, to give it. Now, some if is just a basic, there's also some ifs, which is going to allow you to do, um, which is going to allow you to do multiple uh, multiple criteria in just one sum, but that is beyond the scope of the video. All right, make sure that you understand some if and that you understand its cousins, count if and average if. And with that, yeah, that's pretty much, you're, you'd be at the really tip top most level of Excel when it comes to interviewing just for Excel. All right, beyond that, there's nothing else except index and match and, uh, well, visual basic macros and power, all right? But when it comes to formulas, some ifs is where you can actually know this guy or, or this girl is actually a really good Excel user or they're still stuck in intermediate or, pre or beginner. All right, guys, next one. This, I know I sold you the video as five necessary formulas, but this one is really not necessary. However, it is a really nice to have, all right? Text formula. Text formula is useful when, you're go when you want to convert date items into actual text. All right, guys. So let's talk about how it works. I'm going to start typing in equals text. All right. And open parenthesis and open my function arguments. Value. What it's asking for here is, well, what value are we going to be evaluating? It's going to be the date right here. All right. So we give it a date. Notice how we get a weird number over here. Have faith. This is an actual date. It's actually showing us how many days have transpired since the beginning of January of 1900 until the 28th of July of 2018, all right? And the format text, well, this is where the magic happens. I'm being asked for the day of the week that that happened, all right, the 28th of July. So I'm going to type in between quote marks, D, 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 close quote mark, all right? And that is going to be telling me that it happened on Saturday, all right? Excuse the Spanish, that's the way my computer is, is configured, it's going to be calling it Saturday. Now, what does four D's mean? It means that it's going to tell me the day of the week with its full name. If I wanted to go ahead and type in just three D's, then it's going to give me the name of the week, just the first three letters of that. All right, and if I just typed in two, two D's, then it's going to just give me the day number, all right? Which is something that I already had. But the real magic is three D's or four D's because that can actually give you the actual name of the day. Press OK, and that gives you the day. All right, now let's go for the month. You'll learn Spanish here because it's going to show up in, in Spanish as well, all right? So let's open parenthesis. Let's go over here to FX, and again, the value that is asking for us is the date. The format text, now I'm being asked for the month. 
Um, if you use your logic, you already know what I'm going to type in here. All right, it's going to be M M M M. All right, four M's means the full name of the month, Julio, which means July. All right, or three M's that means Jewel, which is the same abbreviation here and in the United States. All right, guys. So four M's or three M's. That's it. Now we're going to press OK with that, and now we're going to drag it all the way down, and that's it. All right, we have the days of the week and the month names. Uh, text. Text works with whatever um, with whatever regional language setting you have in your computer. All right, so if your computer is set to German or set to uh, Spanish or Portuguese or Chinese, whatever, that's what it's going to show up here. Regardless of whether your Excel is in English or in Swedish or in whatever language you have. All right, guys, it's going to work with the regional language settings of the computer, not the Excel language. All right, guys, no, so these five formulas, they are absolutely necessary for you to know and to know when to apply, all right? That is the most important part because a lot of my students can actually do the formulas if I guide them, if I do a lot of hand-holding. But knowing when to apply the formulas in an environment that is on their own, yeah, that takes a lot of work, all right? So make sure that you practice, 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 know when to apply them and have them all in your mind. If I was asked to select just one formula that you really had to know, not because it is necessary, but because it's going to help you get a lot of jobs, it's going to be VLOOKUP, all right? That's my winner. Mm, most job interviews are going to test you on VLOOKUP if they do an Excel test, all right, guys? That is the, absolutely, uh, the absolute king of formulas in Excel. Now, guys, well, with that, set, with that done and said, the, um, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you for next time. Make sure that you like, subscribe, tell your friends, everything. Do you want to be an Excel god? Our online course will turn you into an Excel master in only 90 days. Excel is the most important tool in the office, but almost nobody knows how to use it. Most people dive right into Excel with no formal training and never use the right tools. And thus, they end up delivering mess reports that are full of mistakes and they end up hating their jobs. In reality, Excel is really simple to use and can do your job for you, if you know how to use it. But you have to pick the right place to learn from, or you'll only end up more confused with all of the different tools and functions that Excel has to offer. So, what can you do? Our Excel course is tailor-made for you. We're going to teach you Excel, all of Excel, using real-life examples. From simple exercises, to full-fledged business case studies. Take the online course and you'll be an Excel god in only 90 days. The course consists in more than 45 lessons and 15 case studies, all with their detailed solutions completely recorded in video, and you're going to be able to access them whenever you want, whatever you want. Best of all, you're going to have lifetime access to the course and you're going to get any of the updates that we're constantly putting out for free. Even better! When you get our course, you'll have free access to our full Visual Basic and Macros course and also to our Power BI course, all with just one single purchase. More than 3,000 students have passed through our classrooms. We've attended companies like Kodak, IBM, Samex, HP, Continental, DB Schenker, and more. So, if you want to absolutely master Excel, make sure that you sign up now. You will become an Excel guy. A2 Excel.